totally rejected. Popularity matters to some, but not all, narcissists. There are some narcissists who are readily able to attend to their fuel needs, more as an eminence grease, an individual that moves between the lines, that paces the corridors of power. Oh, they're certainly well known amongst those with power. They're known to be kingmakers. They're known to orchestrate the various strings of success. These individuals have decisions that impact upon nation-states, that affect economies, political systems. But to the world at large, their names are unknown. They don't require fame indeed. They would see it as contrary to the pursuit of their objectives. But with many narcissists, particularly those of mid-range and some greater popularity is hugely important. It works with regard to the facade. It is a means by which control can be asserted. It's a means of drawing fuel. Harry's wife is desperate to be popular. It is a measure by which she sees herself as important. She believes she ought to be popular. She sees herself as beautiful, refined, graceful, knowledgeable, fun, caring, although she isn't those things. But that matters not, for her delusion maintains that she is, and in her twisted world, that all equates to meaning that she ought to be popular. She believes that she's always been destined to join the elite. She believes that she has always been on that track towards fame, wealth, and being adored. She regards the A-list as the place where she belongs. And when she met Harry, her narcissism declared, Woohoo! You go, girl. You've made it. You've got into that rarefied environment where now you can utilize your connection with him to lord it over people. You've got a title on your marriage. People have to respect you. People will want to know you. Don't worry about the fact that this stuffy royal family won't do what you want. Just go west, young lady. Head to the United States and they will all be falling over themselves to be friends with you. You'll be courted and fated and life will be superb. You will have money, fame, adoration, access. And most of all, you will be part of the A-list which you've always destined to be. Except it didn't work. Harry's wife has been desperate to be accepted by the A-list because she, in her deluded mind, thinks she belongs there. She thinks that she should be best buddies with Gwyneth, with Oprah, that she should be cozying up with the Cloonies, see how she behaved when it came to her wedding. She invited all of these celebrity guests, none of whom she'd actually met, but of course she'd heard of, in order to say to the world, Look at me. I've made it. These people are my friends. Exhibiting, of course, her magical thinking once again. She did it to say, Look, these people have come to my wedding. I am important. They love me. They are my friends. Look on and weep, all those who doubted me. Look on and gnash your teeth, all those who slighted me. I am the mighty Harry's wife. And I have the Cloonies attending, and Oprah attending. All of these people, they're here for me, because they are my people. And yet, given such an advantage of connection, of access to networks, access to money, the money that was spent on her wedding, the clothes allowances that she was given, all of this and the support that was provided, she's fucked it up. And she has found herself now totally rejected. I don't mean by the masses who are either largely disinterested in her or positively dislike her, but I'm referring to the fact of the repeated cold shouldering, 
that is now taking place amongst the A-list. And Celia Walden of The Telegraph has picked up on this and has explained that Harry and Harry's wife have violated the Hollywood A-lister code and there's no turning back. If there's one thing every agent and PR tells their famous clients, it's never to read the comments below the line in any online article. Generally, this is sound advice, but in rare cases, such as Harry's wife and Harry's, where good advice has repeatedly been ignored and delusion reigns, Walden wonders whether it might actually be helpful. A reality check, the therapeutic equivalent of an ice bath. Well, let me see. It will have, or rather let me say, it will have no impact whatsoever on Harry's wife. She's impervious to it because of her narcissism. Harry, he could wake up to it. Take Sunday's splash about the new Cold War between the Sussexes and the Beckhams, because apparently David and Victoria are the latest to have been markled, nixed, ghosted, frozen out, or excised with the surgical precision the former actress is infamous for. This supposedly happened after Harry's wife and Harry began to suspect that the A-list friends they had so carefully cultivated were leaking stories about them to the press. And oh, it's all so deliciously year seven, isn't it? Wagatha Christie with honours and titles. Anyway, we've been told that the accusations, which the Mail on Sunday claims came in a tense phone call, left David Beckham absolutely bloody furious, and that any making up now is unlikely. I would think so. There's a reason the dispute between Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy raged for two and a half years after Wayne Rooney's wife accused the latter of leaking stories about her. Far worse than fraternising with the enemy is the implicit I'm more famous than you, famous enough for you to be profiting from our connection. Cut to the comments beneath Sunday's report, and it's a variation on a single theme. The Beckhams must be so relieved. If I were the Beckhams, I'd look at this as a lucky escape. Are we sure Posh and Becks didn't dump the Markles? This does seem more likely. They would only be following the Hollywood herd if they had. And there it is. The Hollywood herd has been dropping Harry and Harry's wife quicker than a mouldy bread bun. After all, since the Markles dropped their cluster bomb of revelations, royal and otherwise, in December 2022 and January 2023, scarcely a month has gone by without talk of another A-list curl shouldering. First, boom, it was Oprah Winfrey supposedly distancing herself. Then, ka-chung, singer Katy Perry and her fiancé Orlando Bloom, who were once reportedly close to the couple and neighbours in Monty Shit Show. We heard that neither Steven Spielberg nor Rob Lowe, Kiss Kiss, Bang Bang, also neighbours, had made any attempt to get to know them. That Taylor Swift, boom, had turned down an invitation to appear on Harry's wife's podcast, and that the Clooney's, who were, of course, at the wedding, are now no longer a part of their circle. Asked how he knew Harry's wife, George is quoted as replying, I don't. When it comes to fads, fashion and friendships, Hollywood's elite are nothing if not bovine, and there are two things they fear and flee from above all else. And as someone who has lived in Los Angeles for many years, Walden has seen this firsthand. The first is failure. Indeed, superstition around this is such that you only see the word mouthed by a certain sector who are terrified of catching it, that they could mask up around anyone associated with a recent flop, firing or faux pas, if they could. Although they would ideally never find themselves in the same room as that person again. The second is indiscretion. Beyond being potentially damaging to one's life and career, it's seen as the preserve of reality stars and bored Beverly Hills housewives. Basically, tacky. Asked why Harry and Harry's wife were being left off so many guest lists last year, one LA source told The Spectator that it was partly down to their capacity to share. Only Tinseltowners could call someone a blabbermouth with such passive-aggressive grace. But you can see why a couple prone to detailing the contents of their famous friends' fridges in books, Harry helpfully told the world that he saw mushroom chocolates in friend star Courtney Cox's fridge during a party at her house, may not be top of many celebrities' friendship lists. And this behaviour is driven by the fact that Harry's a bit dim and just doesn't think, and she 
exploits everything that she can in the moment because her narcissism isn't thinking ahead of the repercussions of what she's doing. Those that continue to maintain that she's plotted and planned all of this really have it wrong. If she had plotted and planned, she wouldn't keep fucking up in the way that she's done. But the fact is, a piece of information is there to be traded upon. She lacks discretion because the way that her narcissism works is that it deems that it's more appropriate to utilise that information to assert control over somebody else by making the disclosure than keeping her mouth shut. And thus, it doesn't take long before Harry's wife gets a reputation for not only being indiscreet, but completely untrustworthy. Last week, US producer Paula Froelich touted another theory about the big Hollywood freeze-out for these two. Quite simply, business. Everyone's got a movie to sell, she explained, in a Broadway play they want to debut on screen in London or London's West End. And they know that Prince William and Kate, who are the biggest celebrity gets over there, will not show if they think someone is friends with Harry and Harry's wife. All this leave many feeling gleeful after the way that the couple treated their nearest and dearest. But when I think about everything the Sussexes could have been and done, how much was theirs for the taking? Well, to me, it just seems very, very silly. And indeed, it is demonstrative of the way that her narcissism has functioned, that she's now totally rejected by anybody of note. And she's not going to be able to salvage it. This failure breeds more failure. You don't want to be associated with her. She's untrustworthy, indiscreet, divisive. Why would you risk your reputation on her? You would not. Why would you risk all your hard work to see it crumble to dust because of her? You wouldn't. There are other people you could be associated with. And now that she has this reputation and that people are distancing themselves from her, more and more will do so. And thus, she'll become all the more desperate, all the more wounded by these repeated rejections that have taken place. That nobody wants to be associated with her total failure that has occurred. It's unsurprising because of the way that her mid-term narcissism has operated. A quick dive below the line to see what people's observations are. J.L. Clark, considering the UK's massive warmth and support for the pair when they married, eagerly turning out away flags and cheer, they have reciprocated with nothing but utter disdain. Disdain for our media, disdain for our stupidity and gullibility, for daring to read our own newspapers, disdain for our royal family and their customs and practice, disdain for the people who turned out to see them on trips. It was silly, according to Harry's wife, wondering why she didn't get paid to put up with it all. Disdain for the privacy of anyone who has crossed their haughty paths whilst behaving like attack dogs, if anyone dares to mention their names. Indeed, it does not get sillier than that, and yet they still wonder why people don't like them. Sarah Vaughan. Harry was so popular and good at what he did. Shame he didn't marry someone nice. They could really have achieved a lot for many good causes and been loved and happy. Ian Middlemouse. Britain is the world's most inclusive and tolerant nation. Harry and Harry's wife branded as all racists. I didn't even notice that she was mixed race until they started making an issue of it. I just thought Harry had landed himself a beautiful bird. Top Hat replies to that. When Harry's wife was a student, she hadn't yet had her face reconstructed by plastic surgeons. But she was, by all accounts, a much nicer person. I doubt that was the case. Linda Borg Olivier, I think it's true that if Harry and Harry's wife had taken a different path, they could have made a positive contribution to the monarchy. A mixed-race royal would have been a good look, one that shared the willing diversity of the family. Also, with Harry's love of Africa, they could have done a lot of good there, both in terms of humanitarian aid and as a boost to the Commonwealth. Alas, it was not to be. Harry and his wife chose instead to tell the world how badly treated and unfortunate they were. It is a kind of justice that they are now finding themselves frozen out. Mary Jones, the Sussexes bought into their own myth. They actually believe they were a hotter ticket than the stuffy royals. The problem is, though, that LA is full of attractive famous couples. What can't be achieved is the genuine uniqueness of the royals. The royal family will go on indefinitely. 
There'll always be another big event, another royal wedding, another coronation, another jubilee, another state occasion. The prince and princess of Wales and their children of the future will always be desirable people for even Hollywood actors to meet. The Sussexes had a moment, but they've lost their novelty, and their renegade royal act looks increasingly tawdry compared to the real deal. Wise observations and fair ones also. For Harry's wife, this is a tortuous time. Being snubbed, being frozen out, being cold shoulder, threatening her control, and landing hammer blows upon the image that she belongs in the A-list, who are telling her very clearly, no, you do not. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.